Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested tier zoo video. Specifically this one, abusing the game's physics engine. Cheat codes. I like it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check it out. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay. In every competitive game, <laughs> that sound effect was crazy. <laughs> it's inevitable that players will eventually discover ways to use the physics engine to their advantage. Of course. From rocket jumping to wave dashing, dead angles to rocket rides, emergent gameplay can be the key to taking your effectiveness as a player to the next level. And outside is no different. There are abilities in the game that the devs designed to be used one way, but can also be extremely yeah. useful in entirely separate situations that the devs did not anticipate. In this video, we'll look at four examples of builds tailored to take advantage of the physics and mechanics of the game. This sounds cool. First, we have the Trap Jaw Ant. This build is min-maxed to maximize damage, and as a result, its jaws are extremely powerful for its size. As you might expect, putting so many evolution points into damage left very little to be used for mobility. In fact, ants in general aren't exactly known for their speed or agility. In the Arthropod Guild, burst mobility options, like the Grasshopper's Jump, require a pretty large investment. This whole putting stats into certain points reminds me of something. When a reactor is shut down and refueled, you use these specialists, you see them right there, to operate these cranes and these and these fuel assemblies so the reason why you do it underwater is water protects the uh, people above it it's very good at stopping the radiation from the fission products from the from the spent fuel but these individuals have a very advanced skill set in the ways of operating this crane because it's a bit it's a bit counterintuitive in terms of how the controls are but they seem to invest a lot of their points into crane operations and they have their own like communication code that says something like empty cart ghost rider or, or cutter with a stick to the big hoss or some coded language that i think only they can understand so the communication in in general seems like one that they minimize and skill in operating this crane safely is when they maximize. Rightfully so, because that this is a very important job and one that actually pays extremely well. There are people that go around the world uh, just doing this particular job for, uh, for shutdown nuclear plants. So it's quite forgivable if their uh, communication style is a little different. However, the Trapjaw Ant can get the best of both worlds. By using hmm. the move Bite on the ground, it can manipulate the physics the of the game bite. to launch itself into the air, granting a burst of mobility That's in crucial awesome. moments. By doing this, it can maintain its high attack strength without leaving That's itself so open cool. to being trapped. A similar thing can be done by using the move Headbutt while playing a Beetle class. Beetles can use their heads to launch other players <laughs> off screen into the blast zone, but the Click Beetle build uses it for another purpose. By using the move Headbutt without a target, the force of their attack can launch their characters straight up into the air. This can be great for escaping grab combos or recovering from a stun. Grab I hope you combos. see what I'm getting at. <laughs> Using moves for things other than their intended purpose can sometimes be extremely effective. Another example of this is the Cuttlefish. In addition to having solid mobility and high intelligence, you could argue that anything involving nuclear power is for using something other than its intended purpose. Because the purpose of uranium, just before anyone messed with it, was it's just some old rock that emits a tiny bit of energy as a source of radioactivity. But when combined with, with neutrons, it can create this amazing source of energy that probably wasn't originally thought of when uranium first showed up on Earth. Or maybe the devs intended for it to, us to use it that way. I'm not sure. I haven't met any of the devs yet. Cuttlefish has the highest stealth level of any build in the game. Wow. 
Its high stealth allows it to use the move Color Change and the move Shape Shift. Color Change. Both of these can be used in combination to achieve an unparalleled level of undetectability. But there are other uses for the Color Change ability. And no, Chameleon Mains, I'm not talking about using it for an emote. I'm talking about Hypnosis. If you use Color Change and rapidly cycle through colors over and over, you can actually seriously mess with the Whoa. graphics engine the graphics and cause <laughs> other players' games to crash. This leads to a free win and a lot of salt from Crustacean Mains. Here's another way of messing with the graphics engine. Going faster than light in something. Now, it's impossible to go faster than light in, in a vacuum, or at least we haven't figured out our way against the dev's speed limit in terms of that. But there is a way around going faster than light while slowing down the light in water and causing reactions in a nuclear reactor that release particles that go faster than light in water, you can create this weird little blowy, this weird little blue glowy thingy. Kind of looks like we're messing with the graphics. But this doesn't mean crustaceans don't have their own secret advanced techniques too. The crustacean build's main strengths include high defense and an excellent grab. However, their abysmal intelligence level means ranged attacks should be off-limits to them. <laughs> but by putting as many points as, as possible into right. their grab Check that out. they can increase the speed of the move to such a high level that it actually starts to mess with the physics of the game. By targeting the water in front of them with their grab attack, they can actually create a shockwave that can deal massive sonic damage to nearby players nice. that might normally be too mobile to get grabbed by a crustacean. This means that players using the Pistol Shrimp build don't need to waste evolution points leveling up mobility, stealth, or intelligence in order to have a viable method of scoring eliminations. Maxing out their claws grab move is the only thing they really need. The physics of the game does the rest of the work for them. <laughs> I know I said there'd only be four, but I thought of another one while making this video, so here's a bonus example. Cool. Orcas are king of making physics do the work for them. They're easily one of the best builds the game has ever seen. They've got extremely high power, HP, and most importantly, intelligence. They're so effective in the Pinniped matchup that their only real option is just to hide out on land. But this doesn't always work out mm. for them. Orca's high intelligence allows them to use one of the nastiest team combos ever. By banding together and quickly swimming in a single direction in unison, their combined power and mobility creates a wave that can hit targets above the water, knocking them in. Now, they aren't the only build that specializes in knocking prey into the water. And in fact, I'm actually pretty hesitant when players from water biomes try to target outsiders, since that's a double-edged sword. Right, Birds yeah. are a huge <laughs> risk for players that use that strategy. But let's be honest, orcas are far too tanky to need to be concerned about that. Humans are the only non-marine build that can even give them any trouble. So they're free to manipulate the game physics to do their bidding. That's fast. I mean, that's really what any innovation, now I keep using nuclear power as an example, but any innovation, even as something as simple tool like an inclined plane or a wedge, is just simply using physics to our advantage. And it's cool. I really appreciate the recommendation seeing, seeing animals use this. I, I had no idea of basically bites or headbutts being used to catapult insects into the air. That's, that's fascinating. And a good illustration of the square cube law being a relatively small item, you can generate relative enough force to produce proportionately high jumps for a, for a creature of that size. And that's really cool. I really like these Tears Do videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.